Okay, just a quick overview of the experiment that we did to measure the temperature of a hot flame. So what we have here, heating up in this flame, is a 20.0 gram of steel metal, the specific heat capacity we found in a previous experiment. In the calorimeter here is some oil in a foil cup. The reason for the foil cup is because the red hot metal if you put it into the foam calorimeter, it would just melt right through. So inside the calorimeter there's a foam cup and 50.0 grams of oil. The specific heat capacity of the oil we also found in our previous experiment. So I'm going to take the oil and find its starting temperature. I'll show you on the data diagram what the starting temperature was for my demonstration. And then I'm going to take the hot piece of metal and I'm going to put it directly into the oil. A little bit of smoke there. The reason we're using oil is because water would boil instantly and splatter all over the place and we lose a lot of the heat that we're trying to measure. The temperature is going up and as soon as it stops going up I'll show you what the ending temperature was on the data diagram. If you're not here to do the experiment in class you can use the data that I'm demonstrating uh, here. Okay, let's look at how to do the calculations. We're working on high temperature measurement. Now the strategy that we're using has two parts. In the first part, we're going to measure how much heat was gained by the cal calorimeter liquid and also the foil cup that was inside the calorimeter. And the amount of heat that was gained by those materials, that's the same heat that was lost by the piece of metal when it cooled down inside the calorimeter. So we'll use that in our next calculation to find out how much of the temperature of that hot piece of metal change in the calorimeter. From that we'll figure out what was its starting temperature when it was really hot. So I'll show you the data that I collected. You can add these data to your uh, copy of the assignment. I'm going to use different colors to keep track of the different materials that are in the experiment. So for example the first line of data, the mass of the foil cup that contained the oil inside the calorimeter. The foil cup was 0 0.85 grams, so you can record that. I put the foil cup inside the uh, calorimeter and I added 50 grams of oil. The oil has this mass, don't have to write that down. And then uh, took the starting temperature of the oil. The starting temperature of the oil was 21.3 degrees Celsius. After heating up that piece of metal really hot and then dropping it into the oil, the temperature of the oil went up to 64.7 degrees. So that means that the change in the temperature of those materials was 43.4 degrees Celsius. Now there were two materials that were in there, uh, not just the oil, but also the foil. So these temperatures also count for the uh, for the foil as well. So I'm going to keep track of both of those values together. So I'm using colors to represent those different uh, materials. The foil I'm going to show with blue and the oil I'm going to show with green. And there's one more material that I have to account for, that hot piece of metal. So let's move our data to the data diagram. Now the piece of metal that we're using, I'm going to represent with the pink marker, has a mass of 20.0 grams. And in a previous experiment that we did as a class, we found out the specific heat capacity of steel metal used to make these masses, and we found it to be 0.34 joules per gram degree Celsius. That hot piece of metal was raised to some high temperature that we don't know, and then put into the calorimeter uh, to raise the temperature of the oil and the foil that are inside. So what we know about the, the foil cup we know that it has a mass of 0.85 grams. The specific heat of the foil, it's made of aluminum. The specific heat of aluminum is 0.91 joules per gram degree Celsius. We used that value in a previous experiment. The mass of the oil that we used, I added 50 grams of oil to the calorimeter. And the specific heat capacity of oil, we found out as a class in a previous experiment that the specific heat capacity is 2.1 joules per gram degree Celsius. So those are all data that you can use when filling in your data diagram. 
The starting temperature for my materials was 21.3 degrees Celsius and the ending temperature was 64.7 degrees Celsius for a temperature change of 43.4 degrees Celsius. And since those temperatures apply to both materials, the oil and the foil, I'll keep track of that with both colors. Okay, so both of those materials were in the calorimeter, so they both changed temperature the same way. Now let's take those values and do some calculating. The first calculation I'm going to do is calculate how much heat was gained by the oil. Now when I do this, uh, this math, I'm going to make sure to keep track of all the values that have to do with oil. So when I look at my data, the values that have to do with oil are these values here and this temperature change here. So those are the values that I'll use to do my calculation. The specific heat of the oil, which was 2.1 joules per gram degree Celsius times the 50.0 grams and the temperature change of 43.4 degrees Celsius. And how many joules is that? Let's find out. 2.1 times 50.0 times 43.4 equals, okay, I'm going to take that answer, and when I record my answer, I'm going to write it to two significant figures, because that was the fewest significant figures in the multiplication and division problem. So I'll write down 4,600, 4,600 joules of heat gained by the oil from the hot piece of metal. I'll do the same kind of calculation for the aluminum foil cup, but this time I'm going to use data that are about the foil cup. So, the heat gained by the foil cup, the specific heat of the aluminum, 0 0.91, times the mass of the aluminum, 0.85 grams, times the temperature change, it's the same temperature change, because this was also part of what was in the calorimeter, and I'll do the math, 0 0.91 times 0 0.85 times 43.4. And I'll round that to two significant figures again, just like I did before, because I've got two measurements with only two significant figures. So I'll round that to 34 joules. 34 joules. It's a lot less heat. The uh, amount of material that changed temperature was much, much smaller. There's not very much material here absorbing heat, so we don't get a very large heat change in, in this material. Uh, also, it has a very low specific heat capacity, so it doesn't take very much energy to change its temperature. The specific heat capacity of oil is much higher, so when it changes temperature the same amount, uh, that requires more energy. And there's also more mass, so it requires more energy. That's why we've got such a big number for the heat in the oil. We'll add those two together now, because that's all of the heat together, 4,600 joules from the oil and 34 from the uh, foil cup for a total of 4,634 joules. That's how much energy was uh, transferred from the hot piece of metal to the cold calorimeter. So what does that mean? <clears throat> well now what we'll do is we'll calculate how much of the temperature of this piece of metal change when it started out in the hot flame and then went into the cold calorimeter. We just calculated what was the amount of heat that the hot piece of metal lost because it's the same heat that was gained by the oil and the foil. So I'll record that here, 4,634 joules. There's only one heat in the calorimeter and that's the energy moving from the hotter thing to the colder thing. So that's the heat that was exchanged. And now the other data are going to be all about the piece of metal. The piece of metal had a mass of 20.0 grams and uh, a specific heat capacity of, uh, what did we say it was? Um, get my data diagram here again. It was 0 0.34, 0 0.34 joules per gram degree Celsius. I noticed that I wrote those backwards, but they're the same values that belong there. Sorry about that confusion. I'll do the math. So, making sure I follow my order of operations. I'll do the bottom part there first, the multiplying 20.0 times 0.34 equals 6.8. So 4634 divided by 
4.634 divided by 6.8 equals. Now I'll round that to two significant figures, and that will be 680. 680 degrees Celsius. So the temperature changed by 680 degrees Celsius. That means that the temperature started out very high and went down by 680 degrees lower. Now where did it end? Well, when I look at my data diagram, that hot piece of metal started at this very high temperature and it dropped down to 64.7 degrees. So it ended at 64.7 degrees Celsius. If it ended at this temperature after dropping this much, then if I want to know where it started, I'll just add that back together again. 64.7 degrees Celsius plus 680 degrees Celsius. That tells me how much was the temperature before the metal was dropped into the calorimeter. 64.7 plus 680. And I'll round that to one place after the decimal point. Uh, no places after the decimal point, sorry. That'll be 745 degrees Celsius. That's how hot this piece of metal was before it went into the calorimeter. And when it was in the fire, it was 745 degrees Celsius. Wow, that's really hot. But, you know, people don't know what Celsius degrees really look like. We usually think of things in terms of degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm going to turn this into Fahrenheit for you. 745 degrees Celsius. To turn it into Fahrenheit, we're going to multiply by 9, divide by 5, and add 32. And that comes out, whoa, look at how much that is. If I rounded that to three significant figures, that would be 1370 degrees Fahrenheit. That's hot, very hot. You know, when you bake cookies, you only bake them at 350 degrees. That's more than 1,000 degrees higher. When you light a Bunsen burner in the lab, the temperature in that Bunsen burner can be as high as 1,370 degrees Fahrenheit, which is why we have to be very careful with fire. We want to be careful in lab. We want to be careful on the assessment that we know how to do these problems. So please make sure to bring your complete work to class so that you can use that as an assistance on your assessment. Have an excellent time finishing up.